Zondervan did this right. This is the NASB 1995 classic reference in brown buffalo leather. Just an FYI, I actually paid for this edition. Zondervan didn't send me one, although they've been really gracious in sending me review copies. But I actually bought this with my own money. Shocking, right? That's how much I wanted this Bible. Why did I want this Bible? Let me tell you a story. So in 2005, I was introduced to this translation that had been around for a while. Uh, it w somebody told me that it was pretty literal or pretty formal and that would be great for study. I picked up a 1995 classic reference, the old Zondervan one. Well, when I moved to California from Washington, I was still going to seminary and I was doing my seminary studies. Anyway, I was at a bookstore doing my seminary studies, doing my homework, and somebody came up to me, I think a non-Christian, I believe he was a non-Christian, came up to me and asked what I was doing. And I told him, I'm a seminary student, I'm trying to study the Bible. At the end of our talk or our discussion and conversation, I offered him my NASB 95 classic reference. And just like that, it was gone. Ever since then, I have been wanting to get a NASB classic reference, but I didn't like Zondervan's old format or their old design. But recently they redesigned that classic reference Bible and they did this right. Here are the key features of this Bible. So if you wanna pause and take a look at it, go ahead and do that now. So first it's got one, two, three, four, five spine hubs, perimeter stitching all around. When you open it up, it has this nice gold gilt line. Look at the corner work. It is edge lined, so this is really durable. I don't know what the, uh, the liner here is made of, but it feels strong and sturdy. It's not paper. Yeah, it feels synthetic. Presentation page, title page. Here is the publication page. Printed in China. This is the 1995 text. Here's your table of contents, not much. Forward, preface, principles of translation, explanation of general format, abbreviation, and special markings. Here are the books of the Old Testament and New Testament and a dictionary concordance thesaurus. Each book of the Bible is going to have a book introduction. Here we are in the book of Ruth, as you see. And also, each new book starts on a different page. So we're ending Judges here. Look at all that white space. Then it gets you into Ruth. The book introduction will include title and background, author and date of writing, theme and message, and look at this outline. I really, really love this. You can see this is a double column format with center column reference, so that classic reference look. Here we are in the Psalms. The poetry section looks really nice, although I'm not crazy about, this is what you call a widow when there's only one word on the next line, so I'm not crazy about these widows. So here we are in the New Testament, and look at this chart from Malachi to Christ. Nice chart. And then we get to Matthew. Again, book introduction. Let's take a look at the red letters just to show you that this has really consistent red lettering in it. Here we are in the Sermon on the Mount. I'll open it up and you can see how consistent everything is. Look at that beautiful red lettering. I really love this great job, Zondervan. Here's Mark, looks really good. Let's get to Luke. Come on, Luke, here we are. Let's turn to John. Pretty consistent, yes? Now let's take a look at some charts and some maps which are inside the text. After Revelation, you get the Dictionary Concordance Thesaurus. And after the Dictionary Concordance and Thesaurus, then you have eight pages of these Bible maps. These are the usual typical Zondervan maps on cardstock. Then after the maps, you get blank pages, and that's about it. The retail price of this Bible is $129.99, but you could get this for well under $75. In fact, if you've got a good buddy who has one and wants to sell it to you, you can get it for 50 bucks, which is how much I paid for it. 
the first thing that they got right was the size. They retained the eight and a half by five and a half by one and a half size. That is the perfect size for Bibles because it's hand size. It's super portable. The second thing they got right was the line matching. That's great for readability. I don't have my old Zondervan with me, obviously, because I gave it away, but that one was really hard to read. I remember it was just, the paper was really thin and everything. The third thing they got right about this is the paper. They used a 36 GSM and it's really opaque and very readable. Another thing they got right was the font size. This is 9.5.5. Again, so readable, so easy to read, especially in the comfort print. A design uh, specifically for Zondervan. Some people don't like it. I really like it actually. And finally, the last thing is the red lettering. This is a red letter Bible, which means the words of Christ are in red. And man, it's really consistent. I think they did a, a stellar job with the printing with the red lettering. Great job, Zondervan. And the last thing is Zondervan retained all of the great features of that first classic reference. Things like book introductions, inset maps, verse by verse, and it's got all of the notes, the full notes of the NASB 1995 translation. The one nitpicky thing that I don't like are the ribbons. You guys, this is not good. It just, it looks horrible. Please change it. I don't like the way it was done. And the other thing about the ribbons is there's only two put three, just that third one. Another thing I don't like about this Bible is even though it's got 14 in-text charts and maps, which are awesome, there's no index in the front or in the back. It becomes like hide and seek and it's like, surprise, here's an in-text map or chart. I wish they had listed out these maps and charts on an index in the front or on the back. That would not have been too hard to do. Zondervan, you knocked it out of the park with this one. You guys did this right.